Yes guys, what is up? Welcome to Supercars of London and a video that I have been desperate to film out of lockdown, post lockdown, because if you follow Carl Hartley or Tom Hartley Senior, you would have seen just how incredibly busy they have been buying supercars and selling supercars. So myself and Carl have been doing quite a lot of talking to get some time in the diary so that I could come down and film a full tour of the current showroom and lineup. And at the end of the video, we're gonna be going upstairs and checking out their Bugatti Veyron Supersport that they have for sale because during lockdown, we can all dream. And while I was speaking to the legends at Magnitude Finance and using their Magnitude Finance calculator to, uh, have a look at how much a Bugatti Veyron Supersport would cost on finance. So in a very similar style format to the last time that I was here with Mr. JWW and we were talking about hypercar finance, we are gonna be taking a look at some of the awesome cars that they have here in stock. And I do believe Carl is currently with a customer. So as soon as he is freed up, we will get him on camera, hear some of the fascinating stories that this place has had during lockdown and the cars that they have here before heading upstairs to the incredible floor, Bugatti Veyron Supersport, Ferrari F50, Porsche Carrera GT 918, the list goes on. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Supercars of London down at Tom Hartley. Now before we talk about any of these cars here, the man, the legend, the myth, I've said that all in the wrong order, but anyway, Carl, I'll take any of them. Welcome to the channel. How are you? Nice to see I'm you. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks. Sitting for casually you. on this GT2 RS. Yeah, well, you know, it's just a nice place to sit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're spending a lot of time here at the moment. You were just telling me that last night, yeah. given that this video is going live on a Sunday, we're filming this on a Monday. Yep. You were in the office at 10 o'clock. Yeah, well, the, the, the beauty, as you know, of, of um, me living here in the showroom being here is I spend more time here than what I do at home <laughs> which is going to cause me a divorce soon <laughs> um, but we had an email last night a local guy looked like 35 minutes away Carl I'm really interested in um, in a Bentley that Bentley actually um, I'd like to book a view in I'm really busy next week should we try the week after so come now if you want to come now yeah really I said yeah no problem. He said, but it's like nine o'clock on a Sunday. <laughs> just, just come. Yeah. Anyway, he came, seen the car, he loved it. I mean, it's, it's a brand new car. Yeah. He's seen the car, he loved it. He bought it and he's taking delivery in like two hours. And he actually said to me last night, he said, you know what? He said, it's marvelous. You, you, you know, some people are fortunate enough to have the problem of they have the money, but they can't spend it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Things are closed. This isn't open. We can't get here. They can't see an appointment. Yeah. I mean, how frustrating would that be to have the money and not spend it? Yeah. Which um, I think, to be fair, right at the beginning of lockdown was probably quite a lot of people's problem. Yeah, exactly. But then... It's not if you come here. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the point. Yeah. So the point is, you know, we do, we do say and we do advertise all the time we are 365 24 7. Yeah. And we, we literally are yeah. 365 24 7. If you want to come and see a car and you're genuine, and I think you're genuine, yeah. and you want to come and buy a car at 3 o'clock in the morning, you no can, problem. You it's, been do done, it. it's been done before. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I don't know if you remember a black Carrera GT I sold oh, last year. I do. Um, quite a big guy on social media, a good friend of mine. He hijacked me until 2.30 a.m. He, he wouldn't let me go to bed unless I'd done his deal. So I said, okay, you can't go home unless you do my deal. So it was just a Mexican standoff. <laughs> One side of the showroom, yeah. other at the other neither, side. Neither of us won, but I think in the long run, he's, he's he, definitely won. He's going to be on for a winner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the cars here are incredible. I was so excited when this came on for sale because it's one of the cheapest Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when you go on to Auto Trader and you look at the cheaper end of the Hurricanes. There's a story. I mean, yeah, high mileage, you don't really want high to get mileage, yourself. High owners, has it been, I mean, these were quite notorious for being rented, rented out. Yeah, um, but this is a, the, one of the first cheap proper hurricane so this car came in part exchange against the delivery mileage countash no yeah, way. yeah yeah so black lamborghini guy had a black lamborghini wasn't the black lamborghini he wanted yeah um had it new had it for what five years yeah serviced it every year one owner three thousand miles it is like an absolute no questions asked car yeah full lambo history and one owner from new i mean it's full classy spec i love the seats on this i don't know whether the car is open but yeah it should be we can see from here, it's a rare option, isn't it, to have tan leather on a, on a Lambo. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's got the full leather as well, so no sort of alcohol. Look, 
spec suit people. Um, some people would have black and black and black and blue, so yeah, that looks great as well. It's just nice to have a mixture. Yeah, and no glass engine bay, the slats. Which I think is so much, so much better. <laughs> the, I agree on an Aventador, yeah. on a Hurricane, yeah. just have the, have, the, have the slats. I mean, let's just keep it traditional. Here. My Hurricane came with the glass engine bay, which obviously is an expensive optional yeah. extra. I got Pangborn to take it off and put that on. Did you find that you couldn't see out the glass engine cover? I didn't even try. No, yeah, but I, it, the visibility in this isn't bad. Okay. The way the slats are, they're, yeah. they're, they're perfect to, to the wing mirror, to yeah. the rear view mirror. But the, the glass engine bay causes a lot of reflection uh, off the engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't see a thing. <laughs> I, I prefer this. I think, I think to look at as an exterior option, the glass is nicer. Because obviously you get to see the engine. You get to see the engine. Yeah. Everyone loves to see, you know, a, a, a pass by I would love to look and look at the engine. Yeah. Oh, oh my God, that's fantastic. But um, yeah. to, to use and to, to have, that's for me. Yeah. And let's talk about this 16M because weirdly, I've seen this car in Essex. Yes, so um, we were just laughing about this story actually because of your, your recent post you've done on buying yeah. your missus a car. Yeah. So um, I sold a, an old Mercedes SL 280 Pagoda to a friend of mine and he had two Defenders to part exchange, an urban pickup truck Defender yeah. and an uh, Adventurer yeah. 90. So he said, do you want to take these two Defenders against the Pagoda? I'm like, <laughs> what am I going to do with them? Not really, <laughs> said, but you know. I'll have a deal. So we, we had a deal and when I delivered the Pagoda down to him, he's like, there's a guy down here, you know, um, who I reckon you could sell these two Defenders to. I've sort of sold cars to him before. I couldn't be bothered taking the two cars to him. I just wanted to keep our deal all together. Yeah. You take them down to him. So Saxon 4x4, <laughs> Danny, he's, um, we've, we've known each other for a few years. Got the cars down to Danny. I'm like, do you want to buy these two cars? <laughs> And he's like, yeah, do you want to buy a 16M? <laughs> so I said, okay, okay. So I ended up part exchanging the same day, the two Defenders for the 16M. And then when I, this car's quite unique because it's UK supplied, but it's left-hand drive. Yeah, look, steering wheel on the left. Then when I opened up the service book, just to check the service history and stuff, I recognized the car. I just went blank for a minute. I recognized the car and the guy's name. We owned this car in 2010. <laughs> um, so it was a very small world, I think, I think it's happened. I mean, every car's got a story. Yeah, yeah, and obviously the 16M, there aren't that many of them. No. Left-hand drive, why? I think this is a great spec. I've got one that it. lives quite close to me. It's the same white, I think, but it's got red leather interior. I think this is a classier, cleaner example. Yeah, I mean, the UK went through a, a stage, and I was one of them, that um, we were just absolutely taken back by these Dubai spec yeah, uh, yeah. cars. You know, white, I mean, they really brought white back. Yeah. And then they were going white with red or orange, and we all thought, let's do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And everyone just done <laughs> yeah. the same thing. And I, I, I bought into that as well. Yeah. Um, but I think now when you look back, um, Colours a personal thing. I love red interior on a car. Yeah. I love a black car with red interior. Yeah. Um, a white with red is, I don't think it quite suits the climate of, mm. of the UK. So you saying that you like a black car with a red leather interior, yeah. plus I know you love a V12 Lambo. I saw a blacked out SVJ with a full red leather interior. Really? I reckon at some point in the near future. I'll have that. You'll have that. <laughs> I'll, have that. <laughs> I'll have that. I ordered a, um, a black SV Roadster in 2017, yeah. flat black, red SV, full red interior, full red dash, full red steering wheel, full red everything. <laughs> I couldn't see a thing out there. I was going to say, not see anything. the reflections on a red leather on anything. Just couldn't see yeah. anything. Yeah. But they told me at the time when I ordered it, there was like, this ain't gonna work. And I was like, I just want it, all right? It's <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I mean, there are some amazing V12 automobiles up a few floors up. So should we head right to the top? I think V12 is the minimum it can be upstairs. <laughs> it's just the, think, the minimal criteria. Yeah, it's just, it's less as a V12, you just can't play. <laughs> like, part of way for your career GT, of course. <laughs> oh. So now this, can you, can you smell this? There's a different smell up here, isn't it? This is like, a classy... It smells like money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it looks like money as yeah. well. No, it's a, you know, these, these, these classics, they have a... You know, they do. A bit of petrol fumes and... There's, a, there's um, an atmosphere yeah. in yeah. this room, especially. 
Um, and I think that comes due to the age of the cars. Yeah, I mean, it's, we've got a right variety in here. Anything from the early 60s to... Did you wear that top to match the Aston? <laughs> <laughs> This is a very special car. Have we done anything on this car before? No. Okay. I don't so, know what it is. All right, so this is an Aston Martin DB6 Volante. Okay. Automatic. Story behind this car, it's two owners from new. Yeah. The first owner had it for eight months. The second owner had it for 49 years. I was gonna say, it's gonna be a long time. Yeah, and the, that was the original color. It's the only, there was, there was one coupe, it's called Amethyst. There was one coupe and one convertible delivered in Amethyst. That was it. Wow. And it belonged to um, the fashion designer, Stephen Marks, who is French Connection UK, okay. FC UK. Yeah, yeah. Um, he had the car, he had, it, he had it until like, till we bought it. Yeah. Um, I mean, history file on this car. There's petrol receipts from the 70s. Really? Like, just, oh I mean, it's, it's three binders this big <laughs> of just history. <laughs> And it's yeah, stunning though. On top of that, it's been totally restored. I was gonna say. To Aston Martin Works. Um, it's been Topaz stage 11 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's been full PPF as well. Oh wow, okay, yeah. so this must have been a bit of a handful to PPF. They definitely would have done a custom, oh, a custom, a yeah, custom yeah, job. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, look at the carpets, the seats. How many miles has it done? Well, since restoration, it's done about 11 miles. Um, <laughs> in total, we, we got it to about 65,000 miles before restoration. Okay. So it's quite a relatively low mileage car, but the, the MOTs, I mean, the history file on this car is just... Really? It's way more impressive than the car, and the car's really impressive, you know? I mean, yeah, how is that possible? Because the paintwork on this, it's like glass. It literally looks like it was painted yesterday. Yeah. Well, the, um, the company, I will remember their name in a minute, uh, um, they, they were exhibiting recently at a, at a show, I think it was at the London Classic Car Show. Yeah. And we had the car on, on the stand. Okay, yeah. And they were like, Carl, for half a day, can we just put it on our stand? <laughs> we painted it. Yeah, yeah. We should get the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's coming to me and saying, oh, you, what a fantastic job you've done at this car. And we're like, yeah, you know, it was great. <laughs> and the paint company were there <laughs> yeah, as well. Like, the next stand, they're like, Look. Oh, that is, it's not me, but I mean, that's to be expected. I mean, it's, it's, it's not me. I appreciate the car and I think it's so much more special because of the color and the history. But, you know, unless I'm in the south of France and I have my Riva yeah. dot, <laughs> the, I'm yeah. not gonna buy it. I was gonna say, I can imagine you and your wife in convoy, you in like a Chiron, your wife driving this behind. The kids. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are in an Uber behind yeah. this. <laughs> oh, I can, I can seriously. I mean, what, a, what a lovely present for somebody's wife. Yeah. You know, if, if you're a car collector and your wife's nagging you, oh, you bought another car, you bought another car. This is a perfect excuse. Yeah. I bought this car for you, honey. How much is it? 650,000. I don't think that's that bad. Nothing's that bad, not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I just love coming here because the way that you sell cars is so all, all unique. All our cars are comp not competitive to price. We, we set the market. Yeah. So, okay, that car, we own that car. Yeah. So, how many other dealers in the UK would own their DB6 Volante? Yeah. Not many. Yeah. Um, so, we set the price because we're the owners. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of dealers, I had a conversation with a dealer the other day, I won't mention who they were because it would be quite embarrassing for them. Okay. They had an SLS Black Series for sale. Yeah. Right hand drive, UK supplied car, yeah. very, very rare car. Yeah. And I wanted to buy Super. it. It's like, what, 12 in the world? Yeah, there's 12 in the world, but there's about eight in the UK. Okay. So I wanted to buy it. So yeah. I called them up and I'm like, right, how much you asked them for the SLS Black Series? They said 750,000. Yeah. I said 750,000. What are you like, smoking? Where did you get that price from? <laughs> like, educate me. Where yeah. did you get this price from? Yeah. And he was like, well, that's what the owner wants back. I said, so the owner who isn't in touch with the car business or the market or anything else, fell asleep, woke Three up and thought, mil, you know what, I'd sell my car at 750 <laughs> and you just took his knowledge. Yeah. I said, are you even, are you even in the car business? Are you, are you <laughs> yeah, even a dealer? Yeah, yeah. And um, they never sold it, the owner's got it back and I am trying to buy it still. But um, I mean, that's a perfect example of what people do. Yeah. That car would look amazing in someone's showroom. They yeah. would sell cars from that car. Just being there. Just being there. So what they do to to owners is they say, 
what do you want? Like, what, what, what can just, we do? Just to get just the car. To get it. They don't care. They're not yeah. selling. Yeah. They're not, they're not, they're not, it's not costing okay. anything. They don't care. I'll ask you the question. Come on. How much is that right hand drive Black Series worth, do you think, retail? I think retail it's worth 600, between 625 and 600. Okay. That's what, that's what yeah. I think. I think that's realistic because, yes, they're rare, but the SLS Black Series for me has gone mad. Yeah. And I don't think it's worth as much as a Crow GT. Well, they we we, we do really well with um, we've done really well with, yeah. with left hand drive cars. We've had one right hand drive car. They're just super rare. Yeah. And uh, I think they're massively overpriced. Yeah. Massively yeah. overpriced. I it's mean, an SLS. It's it's essentially an SLS. I think the comments you know, are coming now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. It has got that rarity factor yeah. that, you know, you pull it out of a collection in five or ten years. And they'll be like, wow. And they're like, cool. God, we've never seen one of those. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, an SLS Black Series is a great car. Yeah. We've done a lot with them around 400. Yeah. 375, 400. Yeah. Bear in mind, this car costs like 225. Yeah. It's crazy. It's cra it is the one car that I've looked at and gone, how is that price where it is? Especially the right-hand drive ones. Here it is. UK supplied. 5,000 mile. Look how you're looking at it. Look at that face. You know, there's just certain cars that, that really do it for me. And it doesn't have to be the world's most expensive car. There's just certain cars that do it for me. I've, I've had and owned and driven and bought and sold uh, pretty much every car in existence. Yeah. Some do it for me and some don't. That just yeah. does it for me. Yeah, it is. It brings, so brings back memories of, I had one in 2007, an orange, an orange one in 2007. and. It was when I had a real massive love for cars. Like yeah. I was 19 and like a car was like, oh my God, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I never thought so much about, I just want to buy and sell it. It was yeah. more like- I want to own it and experience it. I loved it, it. Yeah. I loved it. And um, I still to this day, it, it brings me back, it gives me that feeling again, like I love cars, yeah. you know? Yeah. Cause Which, you can get very, you can lose that love a lot. I see it with my dad yeah. um, and I'm going more like it. You can, you it's can, just you're, you become desensitized. I oh, mean, yeah, you're yeah. coming to work every day with this, and uh, after a while, if it sits in stock for long enough, you're like, I just want to get that gone. You begin to dislike it. Yeah. You begin to think to yourself, like, I hate that car. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay, let's move over to the other side of the showroom. Let's walk past this stunning Aventador SV, which is here for a particular reason. I'm filming another video on this, and I cannot wait to drive it. But let's talk about Bugattis for the moment because you have a massive love for them. Yes. This is so iconic. And as much as I love the Chiron, we did actually talk about it, didn't we? The Veyron was that turning pivotal moment within the Bugatti history, a Concorde oh, yeah. moment. The Chiron is designed off the Veyron yep. and is kind of an involvement of it. But the Veyron obviously is still super iconic and gone up in value like crazy over mm -hmm. the last five, ten years or so? Yeah, five, yeah, five years, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, and this is a beautiful car. Veyron Supersport, orange leather. So this is actually a special edition um, Supersport. This is one of three Sang Noirs. I was gonna say, it's either a special edition or just a mega spec. Well, it, yeah, it's both. Okay. So what the, <laughs> what the Sang Noir is all about is just, it's just the color configuration and a few optional extras. One of them is the whole top end and middle of the car is exposed carbon fiber. Oh yeah, when you get close, you can see it, but from afar, Oh yeah, because it's and black, if, you don't really see it. And if the sun wasn't shining or there wasn't yeah, light yeah, yeah. on it, yeah, you probably, I mean, that looks really cool. So it goes all the way, it's on the roof, all the way on the roof, all the way down the back as well. Even, even all the way down to here. So they charge you 440,000 euros um, to not paint the already there carbon fiber. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's, um, that's a cool option. That looks great. Um, they all come with the, um, the burnt orange interior. Yeah. Which is cool. There's two, there's two ones you can get. You can get a burnt orange, which is darker, which yeah. this one has, or you can get one called tangerine. We had a tang out of the three worldwide Sang Noirs, we've had two of them. No way. So they just need to get my hands on the other <laughs> one. <laughs> it is a stunning spec. I think if I was going to have one, this is how I would have it. Now, the entire video, or one of the reasons why I wanted to come up, because we did the hypercar finance video last time with JWW, yeah. but we didn't talk about Bugattis. Okay. So this Veyron Supersport, 
I've spoken to the guys at Magnitude Finance that do my finance. I know you actually want to talk about Magnitude Finance as well. Yep. But this, interest only, is that a good idea on a Veyron? I think interest only is a good idea on any car which has got stable value or can possibly appreciate over time. Yeah. Because one thing you don't want to do is take an interest only on a car that is sort of a lead balloon yeah. and then you end up paying a load to get out of it yeah. because you got it wrong. Because all you're doing is financing the interest on the money that you're exactly. borrowing. So exactly. if you're buying a depreciating car, at the end of the agreement, you'll be in massive negative equity and then of course you're going to have a sad time getting out of it. Yeah. Whereas like a Veyron, for example, 2.2 million, they've been going up. Imagine if you bought a Veyron when they were 600 grand on interest only. Well, not an interest <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. I bought a Veyron at, at that kind of money. Yeah. yeah, and you would be massively in the positive or in the black? In the black, is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, in the red. So, Magnitude Finance, on this exact car, 2.2 million, it's a 30% deposit, mm -hmm. so 660 grand down, mm -hmm. and then it's coming out at 8,950 pound a month. Which sounds like a lot of money. Yeah, we had this conversation a minute ago. Yeah. It sounds like, holy shit, yeah. nine grand a month. But you're financing- It's 2.2 million. Yeah, what, like so, 1.5 million. You're borrowing yeah, yeah. 1.5 million. Yeah. So, to borrow that money, it's coming out at around 100 grand a year. Yeah. And if you think about it, 100 grand a year to drive around in a Bugatti Veyron, and then at the end of the agreement, you'd like to think that a car like this will hold its value, and then you can continue. Well, the other flip side of it is, in that year, will the car go up 5%? Likely. That's 100 grand. Yeah. So it's not costing you anything. Yeah. If you get it right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You've got to get it right. Yeah, because you could buy, let's use an example. Okay, Pista Spider or a Pista. Mm -hmm. When they first came out, mm -hmm. they were going for overs. Because well, they still are, but they were going big. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you were going to jump the queue, you're going to be one of the first people in the car. Mm -hmm. If you had bought an early piece to overlist interest only, mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't be in a great position now. Well, no, because um, a piece to now, are, are, they're going for around cost price, list yeah. price. So whatever premium you paid, I'm not going back two years, yeah. we're going back six months. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever, whatever premium you paid, say 12 months, that's gone. Yeah. You know, and at the time, um, you know, we'd sold a few pieces at 75, 80,000 over list. Yeah. Which, that's the going rate. You yeah. know, that was that was the going rate at the time. Yeah. Some people were advertising for 100 or 120, but whether they achieved that or not, I doubt it, but still. Um, yeah, so what we're saying is, interest only is a good idea on, on the right car. On the right car. Yes. Something like that Carrera GT, that F50, Good cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's something that, like my M2 competition. Bad car. <laughs> well, the finance deals on them are so they're yeah. so good. Yeah. You 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 don't you don't need, you don't need to put any money in. You just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just yeah. give them to you. Yeah. BMW. Here you go. Have another car. Uh, but actually, fascinating. That I mean, it's just one of those things. You know, when you're dreaming about winning the lottery, you kind of want to know how much one of these cars would cost because. Not many people, there are obviously people out there that are just coming in here with 2.2 million pound cash. Mm -hmm. But still, like you said in the previous video, people are coming in trying to buy a hypercar with finance. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it means that their cash can be used elsewhere. Well, especially at the minute, people are very uncertain yeah. what's going to go on. I mean, it's, it's a very, it's, a, it's an uncertain time. Mm. It's not a bad time. No. It's an uncertain time yeah. for everybody in every business. Because we've never had this before. Exactly. So when, when we first, when this first pandemic first happened and, you know, people were like, all right, you know, the world has to come to a stop and people are, you know, dying and 10,000 people, 20,000 people, there, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like people panicked. I panicked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. For 10 days. We were just like we were, we were here. We were still trying to work, yeah. but like no one. No, no one was like buying a luxury item would be the last thing on your mind. You just wouldn't. You not. You're not doing it. So someone's trying to call me. So put it on airplane mode. Always the way. Carry on. Yeah, and, <laughs> um, and you know, for for ten days, we we literally didn't we didn't do anything. I've never known 
for yeah. 10 days not to earn any money. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know what that felt like. It yeah. was just, it was like completely like, holy shit. Um, but then everyone was like, oh well, life goes on. Yeah. Fancy a car. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go back to work. I'm not busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm at home. But I've got. Bored. Yeah. Buy stuff. Yeah. So we've been incredibly busy. Yeah. And I want to do a, a big thank you to Magnitude Finance um, because they, in this time, they seem to be the easiest people to deal with. Yeah. Um, Tim Marlowe. Um, go on, Tim. Go He's on been Tim. in the videos. And this is something we didn't plan this. I came down, obviously, I use Magnitude Finance, so I was asking them for quotes on this. I use them on the M2. Yeah. And then I said, I'm going to be talking about Magnitude Finance. And you were like, perfect, I really want to say yeah, something. Yeah, no, I've, I've, wanted to, I've wanted to publicly um, thank Tim and the, um, the DSG magnitude team yeah they have been i mean during this time they're so easy to deal with they deal with hitachi they deal with Oldermore, and other lenders other brokers they're telling me we can't get Oldermore to pay out we can't do this well magnitude can yeah um yeah. so we've been doing a lot with them as much as much business as we've give them they've sort of helped us get it over the line awesome so big yeah. shout out to them thank you very much guys awesome well i mean there we go that is the best way to finish actually no we're not going to finish because i want to talk to your dad about his new book okay do you want to sit your ass in the veyron and let me do your job for go a on, second go on, go on. is it open yeah of course it is i'm trying to work out right you've now. been out you've been in mine i've been have in you yours? been in another one no so this is the, yeah, okay. The only time that I've been in a Veyron and experienced it was with you in the wet. And you told me whilst we were there that the tyre technology is 20 years, no, 10 years old, right? Yeah, tyres are dreadful. This might be the most expensive car I've ever slept. You've you got to just have a, have a smell in there. Oh. It's literally new, this car. It's got like a really nice, it's like Alcantara, but yeah. it's like it's tight, really tight yeah. and, and, and fine. This is such a cool place to be. Carbon, matching the exterior of the car, orange everywhere. But it's simple as well. What I love about Bugatti is they haven't gone for like a particular type of design inside. It's all very timeless. Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. with the Chiron. Yeah. You look at it and you go, that's really simple. But they haven't got screens in there because it might date eventually. Yeah, yeah, well, they yeah. haven't gone for a virtual cockpit because it might eventually date. Yeah. Whereas here, this could be a car that's brand new, just been launched at Geneva, or it could be the year that it's actually in. Now you see why I have a soft spot for these cars. I know. I'll give you back your camera now. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be sitting on my own channel. <laughs> Carl, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. And uh, also, thank you for handing me the keys to that Aventador SV, which is a video coming soon. Coming soon. But right now, I'm gonna wait until Tom's off the phone. You might be alright. <laughs> <laughs> the last time he was off the phone was 2004. <laughs> <laughs> but some incredibly special pieces of metal here. And uh, yeah, we'll finish having a quick chat with Tom about his book and about everything that he is doing for the entrepreneurial world in this area and the United Kingdom. Now going from a Bugatti that is 2.2 million to one that I can afford, I've now become the bartender because I'm here with Tom. Tom, the man and the legend. I said the myth and the legend to Carl, but yeah. this is the actual legend. How are you doing, Paul? You all right? I'm good. How are you? Good, yeah, thank you. We've got a beautiful selection of cars behind us that are for sale. But today, this is the second time that I've seen your book because you sent me one. The deal maker. Yeah, you are the deal maker. Right, guys. <laughs> we know Supercars of London. Forget all the tube makers that you watch. There's only one guy you need to watch. <laughs> That's Supercars of London, and that's a fact. And you can tell them the TH said so, okay? Now, the same would go the supercar, luxury car, and classic car business, the dealmaker. Yes. Great book, it's my life story. It's number three on best selling business books on Amazon. Uh, it's recently got me involved with uh, a Loughborough College business. Um, my brother uh, went to Loughborough University. Do, do you know Loughborough uh, University and college are in the top five of the UK? Oh, my brother tells me every day. Globally. So <laughs> I felt honoured that this award uh, has been presented, presented for 110 years, never had a name. It's now called the Tom Hartley Award. Now that... It's quite moving. Yeah, that is awesome because 
I am a young entrepreneur. You I go. did business management at yeah. Winchester. There you go. My brother went to Loughborough and did sports science and geography, but is now working in the city. Yeah. Um, so I just thought that that was a perfect way to end because obviously we've been having a look at these beautiful cars that some people work incredibly hard to come and buy. That's right. And I think now that book but, is super inspiring. But yeah, you know, the, 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 the replies, the support, uh, that I've had from this book, The Deal Maker, has been the most moving I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I actually quite emotional. Yeah. Because I'd almost feel like Carl wrote the reviews. Yeah. But I'm getting it from billionaires. Yeah. I'm getting it from people in college, getting it from people in university, getting it from school leavers. I'm even getting a lot from women. Yeah. They're saying, yeah, they're saying they enjoy the read so yeah. much. In fact, there's a common word they keep all keep saying. There's only one problem with this book. And you know what the problem is? It wasn't long enough. <laughs> I mean, that's a good problem to have. That's a good problem to have. Part yeah. two coming soon. Yeah, part two coming soon, that's right. But anyway, guys, like I say, I watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos and car videos, and there's only one king of the YouTube videos. <laughs> he's not going to say it because he's blowing his own trumpet, but I'm, I'm saying it. He's the king of the YouTubers and Instagram cars. Tom, thank you very much. Cheers. Elbow. Cheers. 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 <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the video. An incredible place. I love coming here because I get to spend time with Tom, I get to spend time with Carl, and when we speak to Magnitude Finance and do some crazy numbers on things like the Bugatti Veyron, then it just, just makes me want to work that little bit harder. So I will leave it there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and of course, check out Tom, check out Carl on Instagram, and check out this insane business. I'll see you soon, take care, goodbye. <laughs>